nice day for a GSA 50 scrambler ride in the woods. I don't think I could go over that. Guess I might as well give it a shot. Oh, hey guys. Welcome back to the Gold Guy YouTube channel. And welcome back to the 1981 Suzuki GS850 Scrambler build. I don't know if you guys have seen the last videos I made about this bike. That was back in the uh, beginning of winter and now it's springtime. And the bike's been sitting for a while. I've had the new battery plugged into the trickle charger. So the battery has been charged the whole time. I didn't kill this one like the last one. It's been sitting with about a half a tank of gas for a while and I did put Stabil in the tank and Marvel Mystery Oil. So hopefully we're gonna be starting off the bike today. Now, if you guys remember from the last video, I was trying to fine tune the carburetors. I was having some bogging in the mid range and then I took the washer out from under the throttle needle and it actually made it worse. Before I thought it was too rich in the mid range, but it turns out it's actually too lean in the mid range. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking the carbs back off the bike and then I'm going to be putting two washers under the throttle needle to hopefully richen it up in the mid range. And then it's a beautiful day out. I would love to take this bike out on a nice ride. This is gonna be my first ride of springtime. So I'm really excited. Let's get to work. First things first, the air filters have to come off. If you're new to my channel, then keep watching. If you've been around for a while, you've probably seen me do this about a thousand times by now. So you can fast forward. I give you permission. Hey, how you doing? And then we've got to loosen up the hose clamps around the rubber intake manifolds. And the fuel line also has to come off. I made sure that the carburetors were drained of the gas. Huh, so I guess my pet cock is leaking. It hasn't been ran in so long, the valve's probably just sticky. Good thing I added this shutoff switch right here. I'm gonna just pull the line from the filter so that it doesn't spray gas all over the place. All right, now the only thing holding them in, throttle cable and choke cable. All right, there we go. The carbs are empty, otherwise the gas would be pouring out all over the place. Let's flip it around. Now the only thing I really care about is pulling off these top covers here. I really do need to put new screws in the top of these because they always give me trouble coming out. Most of them are stripped out by now. But then again, hopefully this is the last time I will need to pull them off. And this is the stock spring, if you guys remember. I bought a set of four of these on eBay, thinking that me clipping this old stock springs um, was causing an issue in mid-range, but I don't think that's the case. So I'm gonna put the clipped springs back in. The goal with clipping them is to improve throttle response. So as you can see, I only clipped like one or two coils off of them. And the throttle slide is right here. The washer goes in there. So we've gotta pull that sir clip out in there and then this little plastic piece will come out and then we can get the needle out. The best way to remove those clips is with a pick tool that looks like that. There we go. Those can definitely be a little bit tricky. Then we've got the sir clip that does not move on most bikes. This is adjustable up and down, but this bike we need actual washers to adjust it. There's number two. I couldn't remember how the uh, washers went, so I had to pull this one for reference. It looks like so the spring stays in there. I knew that. And then the nylon washer goes on top of the circlip, and then that washer 
goes underneath. And this washer is always on there from stock, from the factory. Uh, previously I had one extra washer on, which definitely helped, but I think I'm gonna need two extra washers on top of the one from the factory. And then two additional washers. Now that's one more than I've ever had on the bike at a time. So hopefully that will make it run perfectly. So the needle goes back in on top of the spring. And then this plastic piece. And then drop the circlip in. Try to squeeze it with these needle nose pliers. And there we go, it's actually in place. I think that's the easiest way to do that. And then back in the bike. It's that easy. Now I've got to do that four more times. idea where I have these air screws set at so I'm gonna seat them and put them at two and a half turns out. Alright they're all set at two and a half. The uh, new washers are in. Let's get the carbs back on the bike. Always put the throttle and choke cables on. Connect those before you put the carbs on the bike. I've made that mistake many times. It's a lot harder to get them on the bike with the carbs on. All right, cables are connected. So that means we can go ahead and pop the carbs back into the boots. Nice and easy. All right, fuel line's hooked up. I'm gonna start filling up the carburetors with gas. And they're probably gonna leak, but we'll see. <laughs> now all I gotta do, tighten down the boots and then get the air filters back on. Basically that means that one of the floats are not sealing all the way. That happens a lot with old bikes after sitting for a while. Usually you just need to get the bike running, maybe tap the float bowl a few times and that needle will seal right up. And now I should be able to start up the bike. Let's try it. All right, that's my first motorcycle ride of the year dance. And let's go. I'm really anxious to see how this thing rides. feels a little bit boggy in the mid-range. Yeah, definitely a bit boggy. Oh, there 
it is. Yeah, we're still warming it up, guys. We're still warming it up. So it's definitely warmed up now. I've been riding for quite a little bit and it's still bogging out in the mid range. I don't know what else to do guys. I've tried everything. I guess I just gotta ride it and live with it. not running bad but there's still a noticeable bog right when I get on the gas and then after the RPMs pick up it goes away I think I've had that problem with this bike forever uh, since I've gotten it running uh, I don't know I feel like it's always kind of been there so I've tried one washer on the throttle jet needle and it was actually worse that way than with two washers. It was pretty moderate. And with three, it's about the same as with two washers. So I don't know. See, it's bogging, bogging, bogging. And then I pull the choke and it gets better. So that tells me that it's still not getting enough gas in the mid range. I don't know what else to do. I will tell you one thing though, I should probably uh, get some fresh gas in it. Since this gas has been in the bike all winter long. How about these gas prices? Dang, $3.10 for a gallon of gas? Back in my day, it was only like two ten. Bing bong, boom bong. Oh, zip code, 420, 69. Only the best for my baby, 93 octane. Hell yeah. What's up, boys? Ah, uh, good old gas guzzling machine. 15 bucks about. That'll do. It's pretty much full. Definitely starts up nice. Oh, look at that. Just hit 501 miles on this bike. It's still a brand new bike. No, just kidding. Obviously, this is a new speedometer unit. And the bike probably has closer to like 20,000 miles on it. filled it up with gas and the bog is definitely less. I think the bike's definitely running better with the three washers as opposed to the one that was in before but it still has a bog in mid-range. I am now thinking that this bike has a vacuum leak so I'll look into that in the next video. Good thing I'm going straight because my turn signals stopped working today. I think the uh, flasher unit went bad. Uh, I bet you guys are wondering where the heck I'm going. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you've been on my channel for so long that you remember when I still used to actually make moto vlogs. Man, that was back in the day. It's been a while since I've done this. Feels good though to be back on the saddle. Some of you local folks might know what this road is. This is 136, and you know what's on 136, Mingo Park. That's right. 
I am heading to my favorite place in Washington County. It is a 2,000 some acre state, or no, county park. And there's plenty of hiking trails and just a ton of woods. I love to go there and just kind of get grounded back with nature. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is going on up here? Holy sh! Oh, uh, it's not a good place to stop. You had to get to that good grass, which was on the other side of the fence. Because all the grass on the inside of the fence must not be good. Okay, 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 we're turning. Here we go. Guess no one was behind me after all. So, a little life update. Uh, you, some of you guys might know, I've said it before. I have been fixing up an old house that I'm actually gonna be moving into with my girlfriend, and that house is done. Uh, everything is done to it, pretty much, and we're ready to live in it. So, you know what that means. I am moving out of my parents' house, moving into my house, with my very own garage and my very own workshop. Now, the garage and the workshop are like the one of the two rooms in this house that I have not really touched yet. And I've got lots of plans to make a perfect workshop for building motorcycles and uh, just messing around in general. So stay tuned for that on my YouTube channel, uh, ripping out an old workbench and putting in a new one. I also have a sandblasting cabinet. I wanna get a parts washer. It's gonna be awesome, guys. I'm really excited to have my own workspace where I don't have to uh, worry about my dad taking my tools. And he's, he probably would say the same thing. He, once I move out, you won't have to worry about me taking his tools. How's about a little off-roading, huh? What do you guys say? Take the knobby tires on some dirt for once? Hey, I agree with you. ton of people up here <laughs> yeah I gotta turn around cuz this is kind of a walking trail not really a riding trail oh I see a different trail though a little side trail let's take this way now I'm really exploring cuz I have never went down this trail let's see what's down this trail guys a little dip thing is definitely it definitely feels good on trails like this now when you get into like tight twisty single track trails it's a little bit cumbersome but uh, it's a scrambler so it's great on the road and on trails like this it's pretty much perfect for trails like this actually okay and first tree so we've got a tree down. Ah, what should we do? Does that mean turn around or is there a way around it? Let's see. Oh, oh, actually, don't want to go down there, but this bike's really heavy. If I hit this a little bit differently, I might be able to make it through there. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to make it in between those two. Uh, what's my ground clearance like? Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think I could go over that. Guess I might as well give it a shot. Nope, I'm on the headers. Yep, uh, there it goes. Okay, well, I guess we can't keep going. Uh, what a nice day for a GSA 50 scrambler ride in the woods. 
So, my plans for this summer and my next bike. Um, I would love to sell this bike. I kind of want to keep working on it, try to get that mid-range bog to go away. And as you can see, I also need to probably repaint the gas tank. Although, it is kind of a cool patina. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Do you think this looks like a cool patina gas tank vintage look? I mean, it is a vintage bike. Uh, should I just keep that? Maybe spray another coat of clear coat on it just to protect it? Or, I don't know. Should I maybe sand it a little bit more? Give the patina a little bit more of a vintage look? Uh, I don't know. But either way... I want to sell this bike pretty soon, and I want to buy a Dual Sport Enduro, either a Suzuki DRZ400 or a WR450. I don't know. There's a lot of different Dual Sports I've been wanting, but honestly, when I first got into motorcycles, my dream bike was a Suzuki DRZ400. So I might just fulfill my childhood dreams and get one of those, and it's gonna be an awesome build. I'm gonna make a really cool dual sport, supermoto type bike, and then I'll easily be able to cross logs like this. I really do like the Scrambler, but it's just, uh, it's not as good off-road as I want it to be. It's just too heavy. I mean, it's got a big four-cylinder engine on it, but for trails like this and on the road, it is absolutely phenomenal. I know a lot of you guys that watch my videos like the vintage bikes. Don't worry, I've still got two vintage bikes, well three actually. I've got the CB500, I've got the TS185, and the Yamaha RX50. So the Yamaha RX50 I also want to sell this summer. And I'll probably hold on to the TS185, uh, and then I probably might sell the CB500 this summer. I want to do a, just a basic restoration on that and uh, just kind of hand it over to somebody else. Big things coming to the Gold Guy YouTube channel, guys. Stay tuned and please comment down below. I love reading your guys' comments. It really keeps me going and makes me really want to make new videos, hearing how much you guys like watching them. All I want to do with my YouTube channel is really just to inspire you guys to get out there, get a bike, whatever, just do something and you know, just have fun while you're doing it. Buy something cheap, fix it up, and you have your own, very own amazing bike that you fixed up yourself. It's an amazing feeling. If I can push you guys to the next step to do that, that's my dream in life. One of my big ones is to inspire people. So if you guys like this video, please hit that subscribe button. L like the video if you enjoyed it. And stay tuned. I've got a lot of big things coming on my channel, guys. Peace.